We all know Dolly Parton as the country singer, songwriter and movie star. The woman with the outrageous fashions, the impossible wigs and the highly publicised bus line. So it might be something of a surprise to learn that Miss Parton is also one of the entertainment industry's most astute businesswomen. For years, she marketed just herself, Dolly, larger than life and more than a bit over the top. She's been so successful at it that the backwards girl from Tennessee's Smoky Mountains is a millionaire many times over. But now, Dolly's branched out into Walt Disney territory and opened her own dream world. When I first started going to uh, Hollywood years ago, there's a big, big sign that they're famous for. It's on the top of a, a mountain. And I used to look up there and I thought, boy, if there was just some way that I could change that H to a D for a day, you know, it would be great to see how long it took somebody to notice, and then it would say Dollywood. Dolly! At Dollywood, she's treated like visiting royalty. But Dolly Parton isn't your regular royal. This royal attends her state occasions in five-inch heels, a plunging neckline, and a platinum blonde wig almost as tall as she is. For the record, that's five foot one. I like to wear real high heels. I mean, high heels. And five inch. And I have to make, yeah, four and five-inch heels, because I'm, I'm just a very short person. So just to give me the extra height I want, I always take my negatives and turn them into positives. So I wear high heels. My little hands are short and fat, so I wear nails as long as my fingers. And my hair won't do what I want it to, so I wear wigs that will. You were once described as being part sincere <laughs> and part synthetic. <laughs> Well, I think that's probably true. I think a part of what magic I may have, as far as my personality, is the fact that I look totally artificial, and I like to think that I'm totally real. Do you see yourself as a sex symbol at all? I feel sexy. I, I try to be uh, sexy, I guess, and pretty, and uh, some people find me bizarre, and some people find me sexy. You just been standing down there looking up my dress ever since I come out here. Dolly Parton, as you may have already gathered, is the entertainer who turned tackiness and gaudiness into a serious art form. And Dolly's not the kind of woman to apologise for that or anything else. People that they call trash in my hometown here in Sevier County, the loose women. Well, that was the women that I thought were, were beautiful, the ones that were just the, you know, the trash of the county. I thought they looked great because they had their hair blonde, and I started bleaching my hair when I was about 15. Although I'm a natural blonde, my hair started getting a dishwater dirty blonde, and I didn't like it. It wasn't radiant enough to suit me, so I started putting peroxide on it and wearing makeup, and when teasing came out, I started doing that. So I've been at it all my life, trying to be gaudy. <laughs> Did you have a bad name because you were following the trash? A lot of the mothers thought that I was a bad influence on their kids, but the, their kids that they thought were so great, they were just screwing around doing everything. And I wasn't really doing all the stuff I looked like that I would be doing. I did later on, but at that time, you know, it was like <laughs> I just looked like trash. But I like to look like trash. I mean, if, if this is trash, then this, I guess I'm trash. After more than 20 years in showbiz, Dolly Parton knows that everything she has, she richly deserves. All the symbols of success. The Grammys, the gold records, and the adoration of millions of fans. I'll be down in a minute. Well, I always believed with all my heart that I would make it. Maybe just that childlike faith was the thing that got me through. I mean, I saw no reason why I couldn't do it because I was willing to work. I was willing to sacrifice. I had been as poor as anybody could ever be, so I had everything to gain and nothing to lose. I wanted things. I wanted to be able to travel. I wanted pretty clothes. I wanted diamonds. I wanted to be able to do things for my family. And so um, I just honestly believed it, that I could be a star. I like it. It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> I love show business. Dolly Parton is all show business. Though at the moment, her emphasis seems to be as much on the business as on the show. I can't see. 
<laughs> Joy? Nobody can trick me. Nobody can fool me. I can sit in a, in a room with the biggest businessmen in the world working on some of the big, biggest business deals, and I don't feel a bit inadequate. In fact, I always feel like I got a little something on most of them. Your first hit, country hit in 1967, was about a dumb country blonde. <laughs> but that song was called Dumb Blonde, but that whole song was, it says, just because I'm blonde, don't think I'm dumb. Because she ain't this no dumb fool. blonde ain't nobody's fool. <laughs> At that time, I thought the song was clever. I thought it made a statement for me, and it's, uh, and like I've always tried to say, I've, I, I like to think I've got a brain beneath the wig and a heart beneath the boobs. <laughs> We'd always think back to the days of how we grew up here in the Smoky Mountains and sitting around on the back porch like this, picking, all the family gathered around. I want to do a song that Dolly wrote that tells a true story about those good old days. At Dollywood, it's hard to move without tripping over a parton or two. There's Uncle Bill, Aunt Dorothy Jo, and more cousins than you can count. Anything at all was more than we had. In the good old days. Dolly the Romantic saw it as a way of helping her kinfolk back home in Tennessee. While Dolly the Businesswoman saw it as a few more millions in the bank. Do you know how much you're worth, Dolly? Oh, I have no idea, and I don't like to dwell on money. It's more than I can keep in a tobacco can anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you used to keep it in a tobacco can? Oh, of course. Everybody kept their money in a tobacco can, and you bury it sometimes <laughs> when you live in the mountain. Here in Dollywood, they milk the part and rags to riches legend for all it's worth. And that's plenty. Even down to a glossy replica of the two roomed cabin where Dolly, Rebecca Parton, and her 11 brothers and sisters were born and raised. As Dolly tells it in her own earthy style, the Parton kids were a pretty tough breed. Mama was 15 and Daddy was 17 when they got married, and when Mama was 35, and Daddy was 37. They already had 12 kids. So, I mean, she had one on her and one in her for as long as, as any of us remember. So we slept three and four in a bed, and uh, our old houses were always very cold in the wintertime, and there were big cracks in the wall, and the wind would blow snow kind of in little snow drifts, like lines of coke in the floor. You know, it's like just to get up in the morning, there's lines across the floor when it would snow. It's true. Uh, it wasn't bad sleeping with that many kids, except that most of them wet the bed. And so you, it, it's amazing how warm you can stay. Uh, you know, and that's okay. That's a good way to keep warm with pee, as long as you don't fan the cover. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, so, you, so no one ever lifted the bed blankets at all? We tried not to. We tried not to fan the cover. <laughs> Dolly Parton has always been in a hurry to get things done. And growing up was no exception. As one of the Parton clan puts it, back in high school, she was 13, going on 25. I've been aware of sex all my life. I right? enjoy sex, yeah. All your life? All my life. Well, I mean, I've got six brothers and cousins and, you know, all the sisters and kids are curious. And we were just very, I was certainly very curious, very open. So I, I made it my business to find out all about it. You once mentioned the barn. The what? The barn, that you learned a little bit in the barn. Oh, the band. Sorry, the barn, the, the I'm barn, B-A-R-N. Oh, the barn. Oh, I'm sorry, it's our accent. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we don't want to get too heavy into this because we don't want it to sound like I really am cheap. But no, yeah, certainly we, not. I got my education out behind the barn, as the old song goes, but that's, you know, that's play. What are you going to do in the mountains when you're a curious kid? You're going to find out about things. You do something to me that I can't. Despite 
despite the millions in record sales, Dolly Parton sees herself more as a songwriter than a singer. Nevertheless, her loyal fans are prepared to brave hell or high water to see their idol perform. Even if that performance is only an impromptu concert at Dollywood for 60 minutes. I started writing songs, or making up songs, when I was about five years old. And I started playing guitar when I was seven. So after I started playing guitar, I wrote some serious, sad songs for a seven-year-old. I'd write all these heartbreakers, things that I'd hear people talk about, people getting killed in the war, and all kinds of, uh, you know, heartbreaking love songs of my husband leaving me here at seven years old. What was your first song that you wrote? <laughs> It was little tiny tassel top. You're the only friend I got. I love you and I will hope you'll always stay. And that was a big seller too. Oh, it was huge. Yeah, it was big around the house there for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> I am a married man. Forget about your wife, Frank. I mean, you may be hers in the evening, but you're my boy from nine to five. In the Dolly Parton scheme of things, she only had to wait and the Hollywood and moguls would be British. there with a multi-million dollar contract. Okay, Her on. first movie, Nine to Five, was a smash hit, and Dolly herself was nominated for an Oscar. Oh, I love your hair. It's so sexy. Why don't we go over on the couch and I'll go lock the door? Mrs. Rhodes. Oh, let's be friendly, Frank. I mean, you've got to be a little more cooperative if you want to keep this job. Mrs. Rhodes. What did the Hollywood moguls see in you, do you think? What they saw and didn't maybe know what it was was just a down-home girl that had a lot of enthusiasm and had a lot of joy, had a lot of uh, zest for life and just had a something that they thought would appeal to the average American public. And I guess that my image, you know, didn't hurt any either. I mean, it's been a while since it had a... Blonde with big boobs and all that stuff. Now is Miss Dora Lee Rhodes. She's gonna try to rope this man. Ha, ha. She's already got him down, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's see how long it takes her to hog tie this sexist, egotistical, lying, hypocritical bigot. Five seconds, ladies and gentlemen, just five You're seconds. You're 40 this year. Does, does that worry you? Does Not age worry you? Not a bit. There's nothing I can do about it. I look as good as I can through the years, and when I'm sagging and bagging and I can afford to do something about it, then I'll go have it all pulled up to the top of my head and cut it off, as they say. <laughs> but at the moment, I think I'm doing all right for 40. With Dolly Parton, whether she's on stage or being interviewed, what you see is what you get. A full-on performance. But even she knows where to draw the line. There's one question the usually candid Miss Parton loves to leave unanswered. You've always been very protective about your measurements of your striking figure. Thank why you. have you? Why have you always been? Well, I don't think it's necessary that people know everything about you. And the reason I never give my measurements is because they go up and down. I mean, it's like I vary 20 pounds every six months. I'm actually not as big as people think because I'm a tiny little person. And I'm small boned and I'm just over exaggerated. You'd be amazed to know how tiny they really are. May I ask? <laughs> Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> Up yours, Buster. <laughs> Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.